Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Localize. My name is Ilya and today we are going to discuss XLIF files. We are going to see how they work, how they are organized and how to translate these files easily. So first of all, let's discuss what this format is all about. And so XLIF is an acronym and it means XML Localization Interchange File Format. And as you can understand, it is based on the XML which is a quite popular format, but well, these days it is mainly superseded by other formats, but well, still it's quite uh, widespread. So XLIF is mostly used in technologies like Angular, iOS, Macintosh, maybe Symfony PHP, that kind of thing. So we use this format to store our translations. So let's see how this file is actually organized. First of all, you should provide this XML tag to well, specify that this is an XML document. And then you need to provide the XLIF tag. So that's like the main, the root tag that should contain all other data. And usually it contains two attributes. So the version, we're going to discuss version 1.2, and then you would provide this tag as well. Then you can provide an optional tag called header. So, well, sometimes you might see this tag in some files. It can contain a special links to reference materials, glossaries, it can mention tools that were used to create this file, so that kind of stuff. But it is optional. But then we have a mandatory tag. And this mandatory tag is called file. So you must have at least one file inside xlib and it contains a certain attributes first of all we have uh, this original and original is a mandatory attribute it contains uh, the original file name from which uh, the contents uh, have been extracted but in some cases you might see something like this which means uh, that uh, the content have been extracted from angular template so well the contents uh, actually might vary here and then you have the source language so it's mandatory as well and well that's basically the source language of your translations nothing too complex uh, please note that this locale should be formatted as specified in RFC 4646 so please bear that in mind uh, then we have data type and it's a mandatory attribute as well there are some predefined data types that are supported you can find those in xleaf specification also you might see the target language it's an optional attribute but well it's pretty much recommended so you are providing the language that you are translating into then we have some tags that are nested inside file first of all we have a body body doesn't really contain any attributes but well it should be present and then inside the body we are providing our translation units and translation units are specified in the following way so that's a single translation unit and it should contain some important attributes first of all this id so that's the reference to the original text and in many cases you will not provide ids manually usually they are created automatically by the tool that is used to create this xleaf file uh, then you have data type we already discussed data type here so that's uh, so this attribute has one of the predefined values and finally you might also see an attribute called translate it can have on it only two values yes or no but this attribute is actually optional so if you would like to say that this text should not be translated you can set translate to no and then inside trans unit we can see two additional tags the first tag is uh, source and uh, well that's the source text that we are currently translating in many cases that's a word a sentence a paragraph maybe a menu item something like that uh, typically this tag doesn't have any attributes but well we should provide a source here inside trans unit and we can have only one source here then we might have this target so that's the target translation but it's not 
not mandatory. So we might have a source without the corresponding target, and well, uh, we we might have an attribute here called state. That's like a status of this current translation. Once again, you can find all the supported values in the specification, but for instance, we can say something like new, like that's a new translation, or maybe that's the final translation, or it has been signed off, something like that. So there are some states that you can set here. Uh, then we might have a thing called context group. So as you can imagine, it provides, well, some information, some additional information about uh, these texts. So as for the context group, there are no mandatory attributes, but you can specify the following. First of all, that's purpose. Uh, so well, what is the purpose of this exact context group? And uh, the allowed values are location, information, and match. So currently we are providing location, which means that inside this context, we are explaining where exactly the corresponding text can be found in our application. Uh, then, well, inside the context group, you can have one or multiple context tags. So it should be nested directly inside the context group and it provides the actual data. And there is only one important attribute, which is called context type. So it explains what type of context we are currently providing. So there are a few predefined values, including line number, record, element, source file, etc. So in this case, we are saying that the text welcome was found inside of this file. And and then we have another context tag and we say that the line number is one. So that's where you can find this text. Nothing too complex really. Also, there can be additional notes about this translation and these notes are stored outside of the context group. So just like this. So these notes are usually employed to provide some additional info about these texts. So here you can provide some localization or related commands to this, uh, to this element, to this translation unit. You can have multiple notes here and there are uh, some um, optional attributes. So first of all, that's the priority. Uh, so one means the highest priority and the values can vary from one to 10. And then from, that's basically the author, or maybe that's the initial attribute that this node has been extracted from. And so that's pretty much it. We have covered all the main tags. Of course, you can browse uh, specification to learn more, but in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. But there are some, well, additional things that I wanted to cover here, because in many cases, you might need to use pluralization to pluralize your uh, texts. For example, you can say one apple, 10 apples, you know, it's a true one letter, five letters. So, well, unfortunately, the original specification of Xleaf doesn't really explain what we should do about pluralization. That's a bit of a problem, but there are a few solutions available. And probably the most popular solution is by using ICU expressions. ICU means internationalization components for Unicode. And well, you can of course find a bit more about ICU expressions, for example, localized blog, uh, but uh, well, so let's see how it works. Now, for instance, I would like to display a text like currently assigned and then some number of tasks. This some number of tasks uh, should be pluralized, obviously. And that's where the ICU message format steps in. So we can, for example, create a new translation unit just like this. So here we go. That's a new translation unit. Then we provide the source and this source is used to translate this currently assigned text only. Then we say that on this position, we are performing interpolation. So we interpolate some kind of a value that is taken from a different translation unit with this ID. 
So that's step number one. And the step number two would be to create this translation unit that contains your ICU expression. So that's an ICU expression for you. We say that depending on some kind of a variable that will be uh, somehow passed inside this translation, we are using the plural expression and we say that when the value is zero, we say there are no tasks. When the value is one, we say one task. And in all other cases, we say tasks with some kind of uh, number. So five tasks, 10 tasks, 100 tasks, etc. So that's how you actually perform interpolation inside XLeaf. So that's how it works. Uh, please note that these plural forms, zero, one, and other, those are predefined. So Linol ICU supports only zero, one, two, few, many, and other plural forms, so you should keep it in mind. And depending on the language that you are working with, you should uh, provide different plural forms. Well, typically for English, you would provide only two plural forms, one and other. Zero is basically extra, but for some other languages, you might need to provide more plural forms. So that's how it works. But now, well, you are thinking like, yeah, this is well great, but this uh, format is quite complex. It's even it's complex even for me as a developer. But what about my real translators, my linguists? So of course uh, they are not expected to modify these files directly because they are too complex, and unintentionally they might break something. Yeah. And also it's not very convenient to merge all these translation units. So, well, I don't know. So it's it's quite ugly really. And yeah, I understand. So I agree. I totally agree with you. So I don't like this format myself, to be honest. But luckily there is a solution to make your life easier. Therefore, I'm going to show you how to deal with this file really quickly without any special knowledge. So first of all, here is an example that I would like to translate. It's very similar to what I have have shown you. So we have currently a sign, we have this pluralization, this welcome, with this home page, we have some notes, etc, etc. So this file is very similar to what I have shown you. Then you just proceed to localize.com and you can press try it for free. You just register, you don't need any credit card or anything like that. You just provide your email, you verify it and you should be good to go. Then you log into the system, you can follow the wizard's instruction or you can ignore it and just, you know, proceed to the dashboard. So that's a dashboard for you. But anyways, you will need to create a new project either by following the wizard or by pressing new project here. You give it a name, for example, xleaf. Then you choose the base language, so the source language of your file. So, well, in my case, the source is obviously English, so I'm choosing English. But, well, please be aware that the source language might contain some, well, some, some funny local codes. So you might see something like ENUS or GB or, you know, something like that. So depending on this language code, please make sure to choose the proper language. So, well, in my case, the local is just English, so I'm choosing EN, but well, you might choose something else like Australia or stuff like that. Then you choose the target language, the language you are going to translate into once again with regards to what is written here in the target language, right? And then that's it. So choose software localization and click proceed. Nothing too complex. And then you can just upload your XLeaf file. So press upload and choose your file from your PC. And once this file is chosen, you can see there are four keys which means there are four translation units, one, two, three, and then four. So that's it. You can see the detected languages. It was detected for us. Well, if the detection is improper, you can choose any other language. And then, well, if you are using ICU expressions, you should TIG detect ICU plurals. All other options can be left intact and you press import. And once you do that, you can return to the editor, to this tab, and here you go. So here are all the translations for you that have been extracted. Brilliant. So we can see here is our welcome key. And so ng2 template uh, has been taken from here. Yeah, you can see 
then we can see friendly welcoming message so that's a note then we can see the reference to the original file well if you are wondering what this link iso means so bear with me i'm going to explain you a bit later and then we can press on this key and under the custom attributes we can see all the notes that have been extracted from this file once you are going to download your xleaf file back all these attributes will be preserved for you including location line number stuff like that so really really cool you can also see that the plural keys are represented with a pretty convenient interface so you can provide translations for different plural forms you can see this currently assigned well so that's your icu interpolation here well it was displayed in the following way if you don't like it just disable this option here well you see what's happening and then you can well you know you can manage your translations or you can for example translate into additional languages so for instance i would like to translate into french so i choose french and i say add and then here is french translations there are of course empty but you can press here you can type some text here manually or you can choose a suggestion from machine translation so that's very convenient you just press on it and well, you use it or alternatively you can press google translate all empty values for this translation unit press on it and here we go also you can actually hire a professional to do the job for you and so you can proceed to order page and on the order page you say new order if you like to hire a human and your budget is pretty limited i would suggest to choose gengo uh, so while well, you choose gengo you choose your project x leaf and you add for example french language that you would like to translate into and here is the price you can see it's not that expensive basically well you can hire a native speaker or a professional it's up to you you can explain what uh, your project is all about and you proceed to check out your enter your credit card and the professional will translate everything for you or you can use neural networks google or dpl also you can use localize so well it's a bit more expensive but well we provide a lifetime guarantee and some additional features you can learn more in our docs and then once you're ready once everything is translated you can download your new xleaf file back so let's proceed to the download page and you choose xleaf format well for example apple xleaf well uh, you can learn more about uh, these formats in our xleaf tutorial on localize i'm going to provide you with a link to that blog post where you can find a bit more info but, but in general you choose this XLE format and then you pick one of the languages or maybe multiple languages that you would like to download and then you choose the file structure so well here is the deal if you have not added any new translation units any new translation keys or localize and you have just uploaded your xleaf file and you would like to download it back then you can choose this use assigned file names so you will have one file called fr.xleaf and you will have ru.xleaf so your translations will be separated properly if you don't want to have this directory prefix just well remove it then scroll to the bottom and say build and download and you will get an archive with all your translations here you go so here are two xleaf files so that's how it works uh, that's how you can translate your xleaf files uh, i think that's it for today folks thank you for your attention and stay with localize